I remember on the trip we did from Missouri to Rotterdam. Same thing. Look on to me. When everybody's seated, first hand round plate. Then asking the lady Jess. Yes, yes. Best, when they would take milk and sugar. E H O S T E S S. Why are those long things, Auntie? Is it Sunday? Get on with your tea party, dear. There's a good girl. We commend into thy hands of mercy, most merciful Father, the soul of our brother here departed, and we commit his body to the deep. What's that? Enemy, come here this minute. What is it, Auntie? It's nothing to do with you. It's no concern of yours. Come away now. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. That's all. That's all. Not bad for ten. Hmm. I don't care to speak ill of a dead man, but I had no liking for the deceased Mr. Ramsey. Neither of you asked me had his son there. We'll have that him again on Sunday. It's got a fine ring to it. What are you going to do with the kid, though? Well, he's got relatives in California. I'll turn him over to the American consul in Auckland. Who'll we'll look after him now? Is there nobody in the steerage? Wouldn't care to trust a son of mine with any of them. Oh, well, put him in charge of one of the crew for the time being. They're running into some bad weather by the look of it. I'll take her a point or two south. We may avoid the worst of it. Time you were taking in hand, my lad. I'm shifting you out of here. Where to? You'll find out. Never misses a funeral for miles. Got a nose for a my old woman. Now, my wife... Now, weddings, she can't abide. Flory, I said, you'll have twice the fun the day you bury me to what you had the day we was married. And who was? I remember the day my poor father was buried. Not a cow was milked in the village. Not an egg gathered for six whole days. It took them all of that to sober up. <laughs> Someone's got to look after this kid. Captain's orders. Who's it to be? Didn't I hear you signed the pledge in Frisco, Button? So they was drunk at the time, Mr. Ramsey. How do you mean, my Ask yourself now, Mr. Ramsey. A fellow with my upbringing and a little boy like that, modesty is his besetting sin, Mr. Ramsey. Like a mother he'll be to that little child. Mm. Who asked you to open your big gob? There must be something you're good for, Button. All right, son, he'll look after you till we reach Oakland. Well, now we've settled who his dad is. What about some grub? You'll have to wash his little shirts and darn his little socks. A woman's work is never done. <laughs> you keep your nose out of my affairs in future, Trotter. Do I eat here, too? I said, do I eat here? When you've washed yourself. I washed this morning. Take that shirt off and stick your head in the tub that's in the corner there. Look, son, I don't want to be harsh with you. But you must learn to do as you're told. Do you understand? Hey, look at that kid's bank. Cool. Good. Who on earth did that to you, son? My father. His old man's handy work. Well, we were singing hymns for him. Put that shirt on and sit down, son. Never mind about washing. Here, boy, have some of that. Here, take this ladder. Well, come on, let's Closing down. Visibility counts for more than 50 yards. Mm. We shall be two days late at Auckland, even if it clears by nightfall. Not much chance of that. I'm going below to have a word with the chief. I'll send Mr. Bruce up. Very good, sir. And do you mean to tell me you never saw the fairy rings in the woods? I wouldn't step into one for all the tea in China. There was a fella called Bill Ryan in our village coming home after a few jars, so I'd smack into the middle of one. That night, the little people blacked over his windows and stuffed up his chimney so that there wasn't a chink of light. Poor Bill slept for three whole days without knowing the sun had risen. Enjoying a restful voyage, Button? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just sizing up the job, sir. The 
be lucky if you have a job to size up by the time we get to port. Now see what you've done, getting me telling stories. Off with you now and don't be running out of sight. And hey, you're only allowed on this deck because I'm with you. Remember that. I'm up in the morning early. I'll find it for you, Mr. Thrill, but don't be impatient. Look here. Look at that. But it must be somewhere I know, because it's not. Who are you talking to? It's nothing to do with you. If you want to know, it's Esmeralda. She's hungry and I smell cooking. The cook's not down there. He's up the other end. How do you know? Because I live up the other end. I'm not supposed to be here at all, really. Why do you call her Esmeralda? I've got a cousin called Esmeralda. She's only a doll. How could she be hungry? Because I'm hungry. What's the book? To teach her how to be a lady. You can hardly see the sea. No, you can't, can you? Do you think they know where they're going? Of course. Where are you going? I was going to Australia with my father. Has he changed his mind? No, he died. We buried him yesterday. Weren't you there? No. I thought everyone was. We tipped him over the side. Are you going to Australia? No, I'm going to live on a farm in New Zealand with Auntie Maud and Uncle John. Haven't you got a mother or father? Oh, yes, but Daddy's not well. What about your mother? She went away. Went away? You mean she died? Oh, no. Bet you she did. That's what they always say when they don't want to tell you someone's died. But it's not true. I know it. Mummy sends me postcards. Where from? Scotland. What do you want to go there for? I don't know. She's never coming back anymore, ever. Because Daddy told me. Do you like your father? Of course. Didn't you like yours? No, I didn't. Like to see what he did to me? Mm hmm Dear. Interesting, isn't it? They're going off now, but they were worse than that yesterday. Did they hurt? No. I can smell cooking. You smell. You're right. Where's it coming from? It's not cooking, it's burning. Something's burning. I'm going to tell Patty. Patty, Patty, there's something burning. Yes, we smelled it, and then we saw it. It's at the end there. That's fog. It is, and it's coming up from down below. Then it's Archie Cochran smoking that carnage. I'll give you that bet. It isn't, Patty. It's green it's smoke. It's green green smoke. smoke. You go and look. You two kids are Hey, fruit. fire the number two hold button. What? I can't make the captain below. Right. You two kids get out. Fire the number two hold. Smoke coming through the bulkhead door. Just spotted it, child. You told the mate? Not yet. How bad is it? Pretty bad, sir. See what it's all about, Mr. Bruce. Whatever it is, isolate those cases of explosive on the port side. I want some of you to get down and hold out those explosives. Take Zach and Johnson with him out. Aye, aye, sir. Come on. Put those battens back. Get the hold of working. Child at once, madam. Hurry up now, leave all that. Come along, Emily. Never mind your hat. Auntie, I've left this world. I want this world. I want it. All hands on deck. All hands on deck. But what are you doing here, you young whelk? Get out to the lifeboat at once and take that board with you. There's no business to be here at all. Didn't I tell you to go, huh? 
He must be out there. Patty! Patty, we're here! What is it? What happened? Von Quick. The parrot! Never mind that blasted board. Come back here. Come back, I tell you. Give me that. Hurry. Follow me now. Don't move from that spot or I break your necks. Getting us away from the old ship before she's blown to blazes. But she's blown up once. There's another couple of cases of dynamite waiting to follow the other fellow. What's happened to Auntie? She's in another boat. We'll catch up with her in a couple of shakes. Ahoy there! Ahoy! Ahoy there! Can you hear anything? Your young ears are better than mine. No, not you, Mr. Potter. Ah, yeah, it won't be long. Ahoy there! They'd never go off without us. Ahoy there! Ahoy! 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 That's enough for me, Kiever. You can't go stuffing that board now. Hand them to me. I read a story once about some sailors who were shipwrecked for weeks. Until they hadn't anything left to eat or drink, the sharks rolled around them, and then one of them went mad. Well, did they ask that kind of chatter? It's a 
was only a story. I don't care what it was. Cock up that bottle and cover them biscuits. I'm still hungry. Put them away, I said. We've got to save some for tomorrow. We won't be here tomorrow. I thought you said we'd catch up with Auntie Maud and a big ship would come and pick us all up. So it will, so it will. Only it's very difficult for them to see us at night. Mr. Button. What is it now? Are you sure you're going the right way? Now, see here, son. I don't want a lad of your age questioning where I'm going. You know something funny? What? We don't even know each other's real name. I know yours is Michael. Michael David Reynolds. Mine's Emily and Joyce Foster. According to the book here, it says that you should say how do you do, and I should say how do you do too. But I don't know what you do when you know each other already. Lay down on the bottom of the boat, the pair of you, and pull the blankets over you. But I'm not tired. Would you do as I tell you? You've had enough for one day. Now keep close together, cover yourselves up, and I'll sing you to sleep. And I don't want any more out of you after I'm through with it. Do you understand? What if a big ship comes in the night? I'll be here with you. Oh, me mother once told me that when I was born, the day that I first saw the light, I looked down the street on that very first morn, and I let a wild crow of delight. Now most newborn babies are born in a huff, and start with the start of full squall. But I knew I was born in Ballyhill. And that's why I smiled at them all. The baby's a man now, he's toil worn and tough. Still the whispers come over the sea. Come back, Paddy Riley, to Ballyhill. Don't be talking in your sleep, darling. Emily, the water! What are you doing? Look! For heaven's sake, child. Look! Look. Michael, look! I told you I can smell flowers. Do you think it's New Zealand, Mr. Button? It's a miracle, whatever it is. I prayed last night it would be New Zealand. Maybe it is, darling. Or maybe it's just the corner of heaven the angels have placed here especially for you. Yammering and trim the ship.
If I had to be shipwrecked by cutting it a beam with a couple of more ladies. Can I go after you? Now you stay where you are. I'll attend to that one. So, come on, show me where it is. Half full, nearly three parts. And me a staunch teetotal of this last five weeks. of things. Who do you think lives here? Maybe some old fisherman. Or one of these painter fellows who likes to get close to nature. It'd be close enough here with the roof off. The sooner I find out where we are, the easier I'll be in my mind. Better climb up the nearest hill and get our bearings. Come on. like Robinson Crusoe. Who's Robinson Crusoe? He was wrecked on an island and grew a beard and lived there for donkey's years. <gasps> no, that's not going to happen to us, is it, Mr. Button? The ship's going to come and take us off, isn't it? Of course, chicken. A ship will be here any time now. They wouldn't leave us here. Auntie Maud wouldn't go without me, I know that. No. Nobody came back for Robinson Crusoe. Perhaps he didn't have an Auntie Maud. I'm awfully hungry, Mr. Button, so says Morel. You're a couple of sensible young ladies. We'll get straight back and catch a few fish. Come on. And if I hear one word more about that fellow Crusoe, I'll take me belt to you. We didn't come up this way. I hope we can get down. Well, that's the beach we landed on. don't care for the looks of them at all. Why don't you, Mr. Button? Oh, no reason. No, no reason at all. It's only a freak of nature that's got that way with the wind and the rain. It's nothing to be afraid of, darling. I'm not afraid of it. I think it's rather funny. That's because you have the soul of an angel. Let's get back to the beach and see what sort of cook we can make of you. What do you say to that? Don't go in there, you young rascal. I'm only going to see. Will you do as I tell you? Devil take the boy. I told you once this morning. Don't move and listen to me. You'll fall into a hole or something if you're not careful. Where are you? Teddy! What is it? Hold on, son. I told you to come back, didn't I? That's a fine sight to thrust upon a man on an empty stomach.
What would those strokes mean, I wonder? Two, four, six, there's seven of them. It could be he scratched one for every week he was in. Or a month, maybe. Or a year. What's that you say? Do you want me to give you the back of my hand? That man couldn't be here seven years without sighting a ship. Not seven. Thinking. Who's it for? Michael. Esmeralda's been waiting for a boat for a long time, Mr. Button. Couldn't you make a big one like the one that went down? Oh, I'm not making this for fun, child. I'm teaching Michael a little about the sea. I reckon if we're here much longer. If we're here for... Oh, that's a grand spread. And you've got your book there, too. What's happened to Michael? He knows it's Esmeralda's birthday. Would you read me that piece from the chapter on banquets? You know the piece I mean. Oh, dear, you are silly. I read two the other day. No one should commence upon a slice of roast beef or mutton without potatoes or gravy, nor upon a slice of pheasant without brown bread crumbs or bread sauce or gravy. Would you read us that bit again, dear? Oh, dear. Esmeralda wants her tea. Nor upon a slice of pheasant without brown breadcrumbs or bread sauce. Teddy! Teddy! Out the sea! Where? There! Up to the cliff and start the fire. Heaven, don't let it rain. Oh, Mr. Button, it's raining. Devil's curses on you. Johnny, I hardly knew you. 
with drums and guns and drums and guns a row, a row. With drums and guns and guns and drums a row, a row. With drums and guns and guns and drums, the enemy nearly slew ya. Oh, come here, darling, dear, you look so queer. Ah! Jolly, jolly, jolly. I suppose we'd better say something. What? I know something they said when my father died. I can't remember much of it. Try, Michael. All right, but I don't know it really. Never mind. I only know a piece in the middle. Men and women don't With have to kneel. All right. Men and women don't have very long to live. They just grow up and get cut down like flowers do. They're always running like shadows and not stopping in the same place. That's all I remember. Are you ready? You have to help me. I can't. You've got to. I can't do it alone.
finish this. Don't you like it? All I want now is three more beads for my comb, but they must all be the same size. Couldn't you fetch me some more tomorrow? Why are you sitting up in this old tree? I'm thinking. You're always thinking nowadays. I don't think because I don't remember anything to think about. Well, that's nothing to be proud of, is it? I want to do things and see things and learn about things that I will remember. Do you know I've only read two books? I've read the Bible. I don't think I read all of it. And Robinson Crusoe. What about our book? Oh, that's no use. It might be one day. You'll know when to raise your hat and send flowers. And what to do when you meet someone you know in a punt on the river. I don't want to know what to do when I meet someone I know in a punt on the river. I just want to get away from here. Do you know what Monday is? Hmm? Ten years. We've seen ships, Michael. One day one of them will see us. I wish you'd stop saying that. We might stay here forever without anyone finding us. You know that quite well. Michael, I was so happy until I came up here. You haven't even looked at my new dress. I caught a turtle this afternoon. It was right up on the beach. Come back and help me with it, Michael. It'll be getting dark soon. Come on. Oh, all right. And you see, now I found out about those trees, I shall make lots of dresses the same way. Also, I can make some curtains and some tablecloths and mats and all sorts of things. Could you make a sail for the boat? A sail? Oh, I don't know. Why? Well, if we had a sail, we could sail away from here and go on and on until we reach land. If we knew where it was. But we don't know where it is. But if we sail away on a straight course, we'd find land sooner or later. Oh, Michael. Well, how do we know there's not land 50 miles away in a straight line? Which straight line? Well, it doesn't matter which line. We could try them all. Em. If I repaired the boat, I built a mast. I could make a barrel for water and I could fill the boat with food. It would last us for weeks. If you hadn't found out how to make that dress, I would never have thought of this. Don't you see, Em? It's our one chance. Dinner's ready. Dinner's ready. Oh, Michael. Can't you see I'm busy? Oh, come on, you never eat now when it's ready. I'll be back soon. But you won't finish the boat any faster. And I've cooked such a nice meal for you. The big shellfish that I caught last. <laughs> now look what you made me do. And it's nothing to laugh about either. I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. You only come here to annoy me, that's all. I came to tell you, it's dinner time. I know when it's dinner time, I don't have to be told. Then why don't you come when it's ready? Because I'll come when I'm ready. Just hang around and keep on keeping on a minute I'm sick of the sight of you. And I'm sick of the sight of you, too. You're nothing but a bad temper. Oh, shut up! What are you doing sitting up here? If you're sick of the sight of me, I'm better out of your way. I'm not sick of the sight of you, Em. I only said it because I hit my finger. You're always saying things like that now. I'm sorry. Em, the dinner's getting cold. All right, go and eat it. Aren't you coming with me? I'm not hungry. 
Em, you know those big beads you wanted for your comb? I'll die for them if you want me to. I don't want them now. Oh, yes, you do. You know you do. I don't. I'll get you lots and lots. And when I found the big ones, I'll make a necklace for you with the ones left over. Come on, Em. That's the first time you've ever hit me. I didn't mean to. I'll never do it again, Em. You won't be able to find three beads the same size anyway. Oh, I bet you I will. I'll go on diving till I do. Come on, Em, let's go down and eat. It'll be stone cold by now. It won't be worth eating. Well, then I'll warm it up. I'll make something fresh. You're not a terrible cook, Michael. Yes, I know. I'll watch you cook them. You are silly. And I'm certain he spoke this morning. I was a little way away at the time, washing some clothes. But I'm sure he said goodnight. Anyway, it sounded like it. I tried to make him say it again, but he wouldn't. I've been teaching him for weeks now. Good morning, good night, good morning, good night, over and over again. I'm sure he knows it off by heart now, but he didn't show any signs. Not until this morning, that is. And even then, he might have been croaking for his food or something. I... What's wrong, Michael? What are you looking at? Where did you get that spot in your arm? It's always been there. A birthmark, you must have seen it before. Yeah, I suppose I have. I, I must have, mustn't I? The uh, tide will be just about right for diving for the beads in the morning. Uh, I have to get up early, though. Uh, as soon as it's light, that'll give me about three hours. And then, if I haven't got enough by the time it's dark, I shall have to start again the next day. Settled him, didn't I? I finished him off all right. Yes, Michael, yes. <laughs> no sign of it here. Nothing at all. Can't understand it. Reliable shelf. Never let me down before. Looks like smoke drifting around that mountain. Cannibals, I should think. Cooking the remains of the last traders to land. In that case, we're just in time for the new season supplies. Rocco! 
Drop anchor. We're going ashore. Well, I'll stay here if it's all the same to you. It isn't. Why don't you take Loco with you? And Tommy? I'd much rather have you with me, my dear Jimmy. I want to find the ship here when I come back. Well, I'm not going ashore without a gun. Your record with a gun is hardly likely to give me confidence, especially if I am leading the way. That's right. Rub it in. You can't resist it. You wouldn't like me to forget, would you? You forget much too conveniently, my dear Jimmy. Well, there's one thing I don't forget. That you're a rat. Remarks like that are hardly conducive to our better relations. Oh, good conversation. Really, Jimmy, you're a very trying fellow at times. You shall have a gun. And I shall carry the ammunition. Devil did a girl like that get here? An island like this. Incredible. But isn't even on the map? We'll soon know. No, you clear up. I'll bring them back. Obviously unused to society. Well, it isn't Piccadilly here exactly, is it? It seems there are two of them. The other's name is Michael, and they're English, apparently. Oh, won't be so difficult to handle, then. Depends on how long they've been here. Oh, just you shove on your bedside manner, Doc. After all, if you saw them in Park Lane, there ought to be a knockout in the Pacific. How are you, young men? I'm delighted to make your acquaintance. I am Dr. Edgar Murdoch. This is Mr. James Carver. Pleased to meet you. My name is... Uh, she's Emmeline Joyce Foster. And I'm Michael David Reynolds. Where did you come from? Where's your ship? Uh, we landed on the far side of the island, my boy. Is there nobody here, apart from you two young people? No, only us. How long have you lived here? Ten years. Four months, three days. Goodness gracious me. Ten years. How on earth did you get here? We were shipwrecked. With Paddy Wyatt. Uh, he was a sailor. He died. Six months after we got Just a there. moment, please. <laughs> you couldn't have been uh, very old then when this misfortune occurred. M was nine and I was ten. Nine and ten. Just think of that, my dear Jimmy. Mere children. Hardly able to read and write. The rude clay of humanity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Won't you please sit down? Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry the house is so untidy. We can read and write. My dear young lady. And we're not rude. Oh, Michael, it's not a bit like I expected. Oh, now, come on, take it easy. Of course you're not rude. On the contrary, I'm most impressed by your good manners. When I think of some of us brought up in society who still retain the habits of the jungle. I don't know what you're talking about. Stop crying, Em. Tell us about everything, won't you, please? We want to know. You see, we don't remember much. We've been here so long. 
We were beginning to think we'd never see anyone again. You're from England, aren't you? I am. When did you leave? Some years ago. Like we did in a big ship? In a big ship? In a big hurry. Is this little book the only one you possess? Yes. Hear me. On leaving visiting cards, riding in the park, personal conversation with royalty and rank. At least we shall be able to talk to people when we get back. You will. You certainly will. Is it really like that in London? I mean, everything? Is it? Eh? Why not? Wonderful city, London. Richest jewel of empire. Streets paved with gold. Gold? Gold is money, isn't it? No, it is, Michael. I told you my uncle used to give me a golden stop in every birthday. And are the streets of London really paved with it? Oh, yes. They've rebuilt Buckingham Palace with diamonds and rubies and whatnot. Hey, Doc? A great deal has happened since you were children. Oh, please tell us about everything. We want to know. So you shall, my dear boy. So you shall. May I suggest you join us on board the ship? I really don't think I should feel equal to this without a very large scotch. What's a large scotch? An excellent starting point for any explanation of modern civilization, my boy. And that's London, my young friends, in this glorious summer of this year of grace, 1914. Glittering ballrooms, all the pageantry of the courts, all the excitement of the opera. What's opera? Opera is just uh, people singing on the stage. Put it its crudest. And so, through a brilliant season. Ah, uh, what wouldn't I give to be in London now? Yeah, what wouldn't they give to have you there? Yes, indeed. What a welcome I get from my friends. I could introduce you to people who'd give you a wonderful time. Who'd help you to... to make up for all these lost years. Doctor's very understanding. He lost a few years himself once, you know. And a very presentable pair you will make with your good looks and manners. And with that delightful comb you're wearing, Emmeline, you'll grace any ballroom in London. Oh, do you hear that, Michael? I made it myself. Did you indeed? I carved it out of a piece of bone, didn't I? Mm-hmm. And uh, where did you get the beads? You'll never guess. I'll bet you in a hundred years you'll never guess. I find them in shellfishes. No. <laughs> My dear Jimmy, where are your manners? If our young friend assures us that he finds those beads in shellfish, it is not for us to doubt his word. <laughs> I don't blame him for laughing, but it's true. I use the fish for bait, and I give the beads to him. Do you know I'm fascinated? I roam about the world collecting all manner of things. It's my hobby. But I never tripped. Beads like that. Out of shellfish. I got these this morning, if you'd like to have them. And as Em's comb, she won't mind. She's got some more. Oh, no. Em? Please. I wouldn't think of depriving Emmeline of her trinkets. There are more, I imagine, where these come from. Oh, heaps. Then perhaps we can spend a little while rummaging around for them. Want to stay here, then? A few weeks, no more. A few weeks? I know it's stupid to want a collection of beads, uh, but surely... Oh, it, it's not that. It's just that we want to get away, Dr. Murdoch. My dear Michael, you're hurting me. I hate to have to mention it, but after all, I have promised to take you and Emily into London and introduce you to my friends. Oh, he didn't mean it that way, did you, Michael? We're very grateful, aren't we? Oh, yes, of course we are. I'm sorry. I only thought... When can we start? Tomorrow? Please don't be cross. It's quite all right. It's all the better. Any time you say. I'll be waiting on the beach for you as soon as it's light. Very good. And how about you uh, showing me around the island? While Michael's diving for the pearls, eh? And I'll give you a few hints about how to behave. You won't find it in this book, you The bargain. Thank you for the meal. Not at all. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Don't mention it.
Good night, Tim. Michael. Yes? You know what Mr. Carter said to me just before we left? No. He said, I was to show him the island while you were diving for the pearls. For the what? He called the beads pearls. Michael, just before Christmas once, you know, when you give presents, I asked Mommy that if she could have anything in the world that she wanted for Christmas, what she'd choose. And she said, if I could have anything in the world that I wanted, I'd have a pearl necklace. Oh, your daddy is rich enough to buy me one. You mean, if she could have anything in the world, a lot of beads on a string? We lived in a big house, but daddy wasn't rich enough to buy them. Oh, don't be silly, Em. There are hundreds of them here. Thousands. They can't be worth anything. Go to sleep. Good night. Night. I don't like those men. Just a slight touch of cramp, my boy. Nothing to worry about. Have it right in a moment. <laughs> Relax now. Let yourself go. Is that a bit easier? Yes, I think it is. Oh! Nothing like this has ever happened to me before. What is it, Dr. Murdoch? A temporary contraction that is bunching of the muscle. Not in the least dangerous. Happens to everybody. Loosening up now, aren't they? Yes. Have you right as rain in no time? How is it now? Much better, thank you. Dr. Murdoch, I don't think I'll dive again. Nonsense. Just what you need to prevent stiffness setting in. Take it from me. As a medical man. I'm not diving again, not after that. For that very reason, you must. I don't want you to lose your nerve. I've not lost my nerve. I'm tired. Can't you understand? My dear young man, I don't think you quite understand your position. I hate to have to be so blunt. But either you do as I ask you, or you and Emmeline will remain on this island. I shall go away without you. Is that clear? Be a sensible boy now and die for those pearls. Pearls are worth money, aren't they? Who told you that? Emily. Did she? Right of her. Well, she's quite right. If your education hadn't been curtailed so early, you would doubtless be aware of the esteem in which these baubles are held in the outside world. And in the next, if we're to credit those pearly gates. I suppose you know what this is? Yes. And you know what guns are for? I know that people who drink too much, like my father and Paddy, do silly things. Then don't you think it's advisable to do as I tell you? What are you waiting for? Doctor sent me for you. We're leaving on the ship tonight, and he wants us to go out now and get a meal ready. Where's Michael? Oh, he's uh, he's with the doctor. 
Telephoning on. Well, why didn't he tell me? I'm not ready, and I don't know what I look like. No, 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 don't you worry about that. Let's shove that little pearl comb in your hair. You look like a... You look like a million dollars. Fine, are you? I ought to change, really. No, I have no time for that now. You'll be all right as you are. Come on. Michael! Michael, where are you? Michael! Answer me, boy. Michael! Michael! Wait in a minute. Just want to see the food. Can't I help? No, not yet. I'd better get the stove going first. Rocco! So if he can cast off now, we're sailing. The Dustin young man is stopping on the island. We'll be back for him in about a month's time. I'll start the engine. Where's Michael? He's coming along after it. That's what I said, didn't I? I don't want to go without Michael. <laughs> what are you getting all upset about? We're just going on a little trip, that's all. What's wrong with that? I want to go back. Take it easy. <laughs> you girls are funny sometimes. Now, do I look the sort of chap that a girl wouldn't trust? Eh? Please let me go. No, just a minute. It's not a reasonable sort of chap, really. I'm treated reasonably. I should have thought that a lovely girl like you would have jumped for the chance of getting away from all this. I'm not just any chance. I know. There's many a... Who told you to stop those engines? Start them again, blast you! The doctor called. Start those engines, you hear me? enough to attempt to escape from me. You'd regret it.
Sam, are you all right? Oh, Emma, I thought you'd gone. They tried to take me. I thought I'd lost you. Oh, Michael. I'd like to kill them. I'd like to kill them like I killed that fish. They've gone now, Michael. Yes, they've gone. And I don't care. I don't care if we never see a boat again. I don't care if we never get away from here. Oh, don't say that. I mean it, Em. I... I feel there's been a big storm. And... And this is after it. But everything... Somehow, everything's changed. It isn't the same. I'm just the same, Michael. Yes. Yes, you are. Em, you're trembling. Am I? to the point where the minister says, Wilt thou have this man for thy wedded husband? And the woman answers, I will. It's your turn. I will. Turn around him. When I was at school, I used to learn poetry. I wish I could write poetry. Because if I could, I'd write about you, Will. Would you, Michael? I wonder by my troth what thou and I did till we loved. Were we not weaned till then, but sucked on country pleasures childishly, or snorted we in the seven sleepers den? It was so. But this all pleasures fancies be. If ever any beauty I did see which I desired and got, it was but a dream.
can't see you. By the water. Where, Em? Last week there was one tooth, and this week there are two more showing. Soon he'll have as many as... You do look silly in that hat. It keeps the sun off. What are you reading? Only those so happily placed that they have enjoyed the influence of education and refinement can hope to acquire that air of Savoy fare so necessary to gentlemen. Michael, it all makes me feel so miserable now. Why? Well, I don't understand what it means, but I know he'll never have Savoy Fair. Well, if you don't understand what it means, how do you know he'll never have it? Because we haven't got it. Well, we might have it without knowing it. If you don't know anything that's difficult to understand, you can't have anything that's difficult to understand. Well, we had him, and that was difficult enough to understand. What's that? They'll see us there. They've seen us. They're stopping now and signaling. Let me see, Henry. Can't we get any closer? There's a reef right across our bows. I suppose they really are savages. Don't see what else they could be on a small island like this, hundreds of miles from anywhere. No place for white men. And I hardly think it's a place for us either. Hard to port, young kind. They're turning away. Ahoy there! Ahoy! Ahoy! They can't hear you, Michael. Why are they going away? Why? They can't believe it. Michael, let me close my eyes and tell me they're coming back. Don't cry, Em. Oh, Michael, I'm frightened. When Paddy died, you were frightened, and I came and sat by your bed just like this, remember? I said I'd always look after you. I always have done, haven't I, Em? Oh, you know you have, Michael. It isn't that. Haven't you ever thought that one day we shall both die? Like Paddy did. And he'll be left all alone. <laughs> Couldn't you have another baby, Em? Several more babies, and then there'd be lots of us, and he'd never be lonely. Oh, Michael, it isn't just being lonely. I don't want him to grow up like us. I want him to go to school and learn and know about everything. I want him to be a gentleman, Michael. He will be one day, Em. One day when another ship comes, and it will come, Em. 
I know it will. He used to say it was me that was always saying that. Now it's you. Poor him. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, do you think the streets of London really are paved with gold? Why'd you ask that? I was just wondering if it was really like what those men said. Michael, you nearly finished the boat before those men came. You haven't touched it since. I've been so happy since they went away. Well, so have I, you know that. Well, why aren't you happy any longer? Why are you always talking about London? Paddy, come here. Look at him. Can't you just see him in a top hat? No, I can't. I never wore a top hat. Now, don't be cross, Michael. I mean, when he's older. I just couldn't bear him to grow up not knowing anything. He should be with other boys. He'd be so miserable. Well, he's miserable enough now. Couldn't you repair the old boat, and couldn't we sail off in a straight line, like, like you used to say? I don't know. And we could sell the pearls and, and buy a big house in London. Then we could give dinner parties and hunt balls and invite the king and queen. I'd like him to meet the king and queen. We could take him on trains. He'd like going on trains. And to the boat race the doctor told us about. You could row in the boat race, Michael. You'd row faster than the others, and he'd be able to watch you win. I could make such a strong sail, Michael. And we could take enough water to last us a month. We'd be bound to reach somewhere. Please, Michael, I know I might. All right. I'll start tomorrow. Why did you turn away? Because I don't want to look anymore. That's the way I want to remember it. Always. I want to go away, just like that. The wind 
wind will spring up in the morning, Michael. I know it will. Perhaps when we wake up, we'll see land. Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> My arms are nearly falling off. Stop and rest a little while. Oh, Em. What are we going to do? <laughs> I'm glad he's no older, Michael. I'm glad he doesn't understand. Crossing our bows now. There's a man, a woman, and a child in it. Are they alive, sir? Can't tell yet. Point to point. Point to point it is, sir. Man the emergency lifeboat. Very good, sir. Here's your helm. Call out the emergency boat crew. Aye, aye, sir. I want to go away, just like that.